The views on crypto reality today are the opinions of crypto reality's researchers based on publicly available information and 10 years of studying these areas. At no point does crypto reality recommend harassing these creatures. Remember, always obey park rules and always stay on designated park trails. If we have to desalinate our water before we drink it and only use it as a secondary source from the aquifer, what do you think the creatures are doing right now? Jonathan Dickinson State Park. No, before you go. The Kitching Creek Nature Trail Overlook is currently closed until further notice. What's happening, guys? Welcome to the Bigfoot Researchers Journal. Today we're uh, again in the Okeechobee Belt of South Florida. That's just east of Lake Okeechobee. You can see right there. And, uh, and we're going to be heading into the Triangle. And it's going to be the northeast end in Jonathan Dickinson State Park. That's right. We visited there last week on Thursday with two of our members from Patreon. And we caught them on film. And big ones. Stick around, man. We're going to break this footage down. So basically, the public is completely unaware that these enormous creatures exist, first of all. Secondly, they're... For the most part, uh, largely, the general public is unaware that they suffer from completely different vision uh, as human beings than pretty much everything on the planet. And we don't understand how that's affecting our understanding of reality. There are these enormous creatures that not only exist, but they exist in places you least suspect, in places the general public least suspects. Jonathan Dickinson State Park is one of these places, and as we continue with the study, uh, it's going to become even more self-evident that this is the case, that these giant creatures, they do indeed exist, they are indeed in Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and according to our data, they're in need of fresh water because the aquifer has salt water mixed in now. Okay, so we're at the water source, which is really just a cesspool, you know, one foot deep pond. And there's a bunch of little fish and stuff in it, but there's huge swatches where something's been laying here. Um, it looks to be based on the tracks like a couple hundred pound, like two, two or three, two and three hundred pound hogs. This particular one right here, this is enormous, right? This is a 300 pound animal, period. You know, I've seen this many times and seen the hogs that leave these lay downs like this. Uh, could have been two right there, but in any case, we see activity here of what they like to eat, right? I mean, uh, this is really interesting back in here because we got fruit which attracts the hogs which essentially makes this prime hunting habitat the hogs are always going to try to be in here especially in season when that fruit's ripe i'm sure they smell it i'm sure all the deer everybody smells that in here and this is one of those places that we continuously capture these guys on film and i think that's why information right we're looking at uh, a Bigfoot that I filmed with uh, Patreon member Dave D and his wife they were uh, actually in a van just behind me in the parking lot and um, you know knowing what I know about their behavior and parking lots I was able to uh, you know pull one out and he's sniffing me you can literally watch this guy um, as I scroll forward on this and uh, and you can see him smell in the air he's like And we've got the up curled nostril right here and this is like that kind of trollish looking nose and then the brow is right behind it he's just looking sort of down his nose he's got that sniffer up 
in, uh, in the frame before we can see a little bit of you know the full nostril here and the other one he just got like a little plants and stuff up or maybe possibly his hand I don't know but you can see his whole head right there and that's his eyeball right inside there underneath that brow you can see the actual coloration is kind of showing through and then you've got green on the rest of it that's that diffusion and uh, diffusion has got a couple of different colors and there's also the gold uh, weave plants that are all over the top they're like little vines and they're gold colored they love sitting under them appears to be a few other creatures with them but this guy Dave he was sniffing me you guys you guys I'm telling you now in the field you might think this is really far from me but it was only about 45 yards and he was by a, about a I don't know probably 28 inch around circumference tree so I'd say this is probably a juvenile a really young one but um, shooting closer up right so every time we go in the field we're getting better at this and now I have this new uh, data model for this particular location and, uh, and I'm gonna pound it I'm gonna catch them watch so these are the saw palmetto berries these prairies with these saw palmettos give up this food right here this is a food source it's an unripened one and then here's a ripe one and if you look inside it's got this orangish seed in it you see piles and piles and piles and piles of these things chewed up in there and uh they have a they have a very uh unfruity smell and they're kind of oily but um it's apparent that something is consuming thousands and thousands of these things because i've seen about a hundred piles where something takes them all in their mouth and then has that's the cool. presence of mind to spit it all out in a single tracks. pile and that's something we see consistently that's in all cool. our research areas as well and i got a bear for yeah right there. and that's not a hog hogs aren't doing that Hogs are chewing and eating and chewing it all. There's a creature in this forest that eats hundreds of pounds of these things and leaves piles of the seeds in one big pile. They're all through here. spot man it's ground zero it's got everything they need man the low light is huge it's huge there is there's no surviving one, without it <laughs> yeah there's one third the amount of sunlight in here than as there is out in the open and, you feel and that it. in and of itself is is going to lower the temperature so aside from the fact that we're below sea level in the aquifer we're standing in the aquifer right now in the end this is a result this particular creek so get an air conditioning like Mel was saying earlier it, it, it's just cooler around your feet isn't it yes you can feel the temperature difference the lower you, you actually get. can feel the coolness radiating up from the ground which yeah. is very interesting yeah well that's the aquifer underneath the surface you know what I mean I mean that that stuff is uh, in central Florida 72 degrees all year long so if we've got let's just say that that's the average temperature of the aquifer in, here in Florida you have essentially cool water pipes running through this particular area now if you really want to get into the pattern of this find those areas where the aquifer is closest to the surface and i believe you'll find the clans of sasquatch wherever you are This is a feeding station for all the wildlife. And if you focus on that in your research, find those feeding stations. When you start seeing the signs, what do we have? We have the three basic requirements for what we talk about is the areas that these creatures frequent or habitate. We have water. In addition to that tepid mess that, you know, right there, it's normally flooded and this is a creek. It's, we should be standing in about two feet of water right here. Where
we're standing. The dry season, it turns into a, a habitat. We have the water, we have the temperature difference. It's like our the shade. The home, the we, home. Have, we have the low light. We also have a food source in these mangoes. Plenty of date palms, and those bear fruit as well. Uh, and, uh, and then we've got the game coming into the area to eat the fallen fruit. So this is like every aspect of what a human or an anthropoid would look for to survive. This is the spot that you can find it, right? So for me, it's no secret why, you know, for four years now, no matter what we've done, they just come back and stand there for us. The truth here is that we learn as we go. And with every expedition, we seem to be recognizing and coming to terms with the fact, the reality, the hidden reality, the crypto reality that these creatures are indeed real. Achromatically colored giants exist. They're among us already. And the salinity levels in our aquifer in South Florida are causing displacement. I imagine our authorities are scrambling to try to keep this under control. Attempting to keep it from spilling over into our neighboring communities. On a positive note, someone does seem to have had foresight and foreknowledge because in the higher grounds exist large enough water sources that are separate or appear to be separate from the aquifer. Congratulations for now. Crypto Reality YouTube and Crypto Reality Patreon. Forwarding mankind's understanding of the reality we all face. Slow down. You're missing quite a bit and it's right in front of you.